So we're back looking at the precision attenuator circuit again, and that's because I had an interesting incident occur during testing. Now, this initially had me, to be honest, a bit scared, but it's actually okay, and if anything, it's kind of an interesting learning exercise. I've tried to keep all of my grounds separate, and particularly the uh, ground of the 5 volt supply, because that's powering the relays, and that's going to be particularly dirty. But I've actually uh, kept the, um, the 0 volt uh, line to the power supply, to the split power supply, separate from the main copper pore that's being used as the reference ground for the op amps. And the idea is that you connect those in a sort of star grounding arrangement, as you would expect. And what happened is that during testing, my ground wire had fallen off. And that had some interesting and somewhat unpleasant consequences, as we shall see. So here we are, we're feeding in a 1 kilohertz sine wave, and that's all looking quite nice, all well and good. And now I'll just disconnect the ground wire and we'll see what happens. Oh dear, yeah, that doesn't look good. Now, I'll just disconnect the source. Oh, no. It doesn't matter if there's no input. We've still got this. Now, we really can't tell what that is because uh, our time base is completely wrong and it's all just aliased all to hell. So what we need to do is adjust the time base so that we can make some sense of this. Okay, so currently at 200 microseconds per division, which makes sense for our one kilohertz, but not for this oscillation, which is obviously much... Ah, that looks like something, doesn't it? 200 nanoseconds. Okay. I think we've got something in the order of 3 megahertz there. This initially scared me, but of course it's fine because it's purely because the uh, the ground's dis disconnected, and so we've got an un unintentional feedback path. Um, you know, we're trying to use the the ground as a as a low impedance reference, and actually it's very easy to push around. So the output can push the uh, ground around and the uh, the ground plane around, and that's going to affect what's happening at the input. It's a it's a feedback path that we didn't have in mind at all. So I'm really not in the least bit surprised that we end up. Um, putting the op-amp into oscillation like this. But what I thought was interesting was to test the, the behaviour of this op-amp in the audio band. And obviously you put it on the scope, it's pretty obvious that we're getting this 3 megahertz oscillation. But what if we were just listening to it? Um, would we notice a, a change in the behaviour of the op-amp when it comes to it purely trying to amplify audio? So we thought we'd give that a go. So for this test, we're going to use the 3562A, and we're going to feed in a one kilohertz sine wave at one volt RMS. Uh, we're looking at the output of the attenuator board. Um, we're looking at the uh, spectrum from 20 to 20 kilohertz, and we've got it set up to measure THD, and we've got markers where all the harmonics should fall, um, really not showing anything at the moment. Um, we're not going to be able to measure how clean this amplifier is with this instrument. It's uh, not really up to that task, but it'll certainly work quite well when it comes to dealing with what happens when the same op amp is oscillating at three odd megahertz. And because by removing this ground wire I could just make that happen, I thought that could be quite a cool test. So at the moment, we're getting, what is it, minus 75 odd dB of THD, which is actually much better than that, but that's about the best the single measure. Okay. Oh dear. There you go. And what do we get? Uh, about minus 30 dB. That's really not good. So that was all I really wanted to show. Uh, basically, just thought it was interesting 
that because we had an op amp um, amplifier set up which we could throw into oscillation and back out again at will I thought that would be rather good to sort of see how its performance changes purely within the audio band and it gives you a sense of what might happen if you were to go around swapping op amps for other ones with different bandwidth characteristics if you don't have the test equipment to be able to tell whether or not something is oscillating and as you can see it has a pretty profound effect on how well it works anyway that was it for today i hope you enjoyed that as ever thanks for watching